Have you ever met the little spirits of the forest? They are often referred to as woodland spirits or nature spirits and are prevalent in folklore and mythologies across numerous cultures around the world. These spirits are believed to inhabit forests and wooded areas and they are often depicted as guardians and protectors of nature. The jewelry piece I will be designing and making today is inspired by those little forest spirits, in particular the ones I imagined as a little kid while traveling through the Orava region in Slovakia. I called them Oravianki, which can be translated to Oravlings. I remembered this story when I was visiting the Slovakian Tatra mountains this week and I felt a strong inspiration to create something that would encapsulate the magic of the forest and mountains. When I was little, my parents took me and my sister on holiday to Slovakia. Us being from the Beskid region, we live roughly about an hour from the border Poland shares with Slovakia. Zuberec, a beautiful small city located close to Slovakian Tatra Mountains, was our destination. To get there, we had to pass through the Orava region. The road we took was going through areas covered in lush forests. The weather that day, however, well, it wasn't what we expected. Instead of clear blue skies and sunshine, we were met with fog, low-hanging clouds and sporadic rain. But, surprisingly, I couldn't have imagined a better weather to cross through Orava. It looked absolutely magical and felt as if the forest spirits were about to come out and meet us, asking us about the purpose of our visit. You see, they are gentle and kind, but they take their role as forest protectors very seriously. While I'm designing and making the piece, let me tell you a bit more about the forest spirits and the folklore that surrounds them. They are often seen as caretakers of the natural world, associated with the vitality and well-being of forests, plants and animals. In many cultures, they are believed to have the power to bless or curse those who interact with their domain. Forest spirits are frequently depicted as shapeshifters, able to assume various forms such as animals or ethereal beings. This ability allows them to blend into their surroundings and interact with both humans and other creatures. That's why you never know if the cautious fox you see in the distance may be just an animal minding its own business or a forest spirit keeping an eye on you. And you better be careful, because some forest spirits have mischievous tendencies and enjoy playing tricks on unsuspecting travelers or humans who disrespect them and nature. These pranks can range from harmless mischief to more significant consequences, serving as a reminder to respect the natural world. To appease and honor the forest spirits, various cultures have developed rituals and practices. These may include leaving offerings such as food, flowers or other symbolic items, performing dances or ceremonies or observing specific traditions when entering the forest.
you may know of Kodama, which are spirits associated with trees in Japanese folklore. They appear in a truly wonderful animated movie by Studio Ghibli called Princess Mononoke. Kodama are often depicted as small humanoid spirits or ghosts that dwell within the trees. The name Kodama is derived from the words ko meaning tree and dama meaning spirit or essence. They are thought to reside within the trees and protect them from harm. In Japanese folklore, it is believed that cutting down or damaging a tree inhabited by a Kodama can bring misfortune or even provoke their wrath. But they are generally considered to be benevolent beings. They are known for their quiet and shy nature, often avoiding human contact. However, they can sometimes play tricks on humans or create mysterious phenomena, such as making eerie sounds or causing lights to flicker in the forest. Other fascinating beings and spirits appear in Slavic folklore, like Rusauka, who is a typically female entity associated with water and often seen as malevolent towards humans. However, before the 19th century, Rusalkas were not considered evil. They were seen as helpful, benevolent spirits linked to fertility as they provided moisture to the fields in the spring and helped grow the crops. In the 19th century, Rusalka is a being that's no longer alive and is a dangerous and loud spirit. They were often connected to women who died tragically in or near water and returned to seek justice for their untimely deaths. They are believed to haunt the areas where they drowned or the bodies of water they inhabit. Rusalkas may curse those who have wronged them or bring misfortune to those who encountered them. Most of the time they were believed to lure young men with their mesmerizing looks and voice, which resembles the concept of mermaids. Rusalkas are often depicted naked with loose hair, representing universal beauty. There was a distinction in the appearance of Rusalka. Forest ones would have black hair, while water ones were believed to have golden hair. And when the Lord men approached them, their hair would turn green and their faces would become contorted. An important attribute of Rusalkas is a comb, usually made from fish bones. In Slavic folklore, Rusalkas represent the unpredictable and mysterious forces of nature. They embody both beauty and danger, with their stories reflecting the dual nature of water as a life-giving and potentially destructive force. Another spirit is that of Leshe or Boruta. 
It's a powerful forest spirit often depicted as a large, horned humanoid figure covered in moss and leaves and with wild, shaggy hair. He has shape-shifting abilities and can change his size and height. Sometimes he may be portrayed as malevolent, mischievous and unpredictable being who may play tricks on humans or lead them astray in the woods. However, he is also seen as a guardian of the forest, protecting its secrets and animals living within. His approach towards humans is rather neutral and depends on the attitude and intentions people may have towards the forest. Boruta is known to be territorial and can be easily angered if the forest is disturbed. Yes, is a generic term used to describe various forest spirits in Polish folklore. They are often depicted as mischievous, shape-shifting creatures with both human and animal characteristics. Biesi are associated with the wild and untamed aspects of nature and are known for their unpredictable behavior. is a forest spirit associated with chaos and mischief. It is often depicted as an old female creature with one eye or as an ugly male goblin with twisted features. <laughs> Liho delights in causing trouble, breaking things and generally disrupting order and harmony. It is considered a trickster spirit that brings bad luck and misfortune to those it encounters. There are several interesting proverbs connected with Liho, for example, don't wake Liho while it's quiet, which is the same as let the sleeping dogs lie, and Ticho Liho nie śpi, translated as quiet, evil doesn't sleep. I find each story and depiction of forest spirits, demons and beings absolutely fascinating. Each spirit has its own unique traits and characteristics. Some share a positive and protective role in the lives of humans and the natural world. Slavic folklore reflects the belief in the coexistence of both malevolent and benevolent spirits, emphasizing the need to respect and appease these supernatural beings for harmony and well-being.
I hope you enjoyed this video and stories I had for you today. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. If you'd like to see the tools I'm using in this video, they are linked in the description box below. Huge thank you to Pepe Tools who made this video possible. I wholeheartedly recommend them and their tools for your jewelry making needs. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!